I think we have uh, two words here that are exemplarity and purpose that are the main vehicles for leadership in business to uh, implement, I would say, success in business and, and long-term value. Exemplarity is something that is uh, requested, I would say, expected from our co-workers or, or collaborators. Um, it's something that um, cannot be faked. Every organization is existing to resolve a problem that is in existence in the society or going to be existing in the society in the future. So it is for ensuring that a human life has become easier and assist them to have a better quality of life is something which organizations are standing for. Whether a manufacturing organization which produces an air condition to give you comfort or a service organization, a hotel, which will give you a place to stay when you are in difficulty searching for it to uh, even agro products which is going to be feeding your body. All of them are organizations. So every company that you can think about is to improve the human convenience. It helps to mold the uh, conviction in them that uh, it is not just about selling a product, it is about selling a concept, a value, a benefit that uh, the society needs to have because everyone has a family. Now people have moved from shareholders to customer, customer is boss, customer is king. But that's not enough. You cannot address customer or shareholders unless you understand the needs of your employees, needs of your suppliers, the community around. Business has to behave true to its principles, has to have a win-win paradigm, and in and through that, create value for the person across the table. If you inculcate good values in them, through number of demonstrations, live examples, then they give you a back everything what you have done for them. I think it comes back to this question about people matter. I mean, it goes in, in things which are obvious about health and safety. We, we make that absolutely the first thing to, to make sure that the health, safety, well-being as well as environmental protection, but first of all, the health and safety of every person either who works in the company or visits the company is paramount. But then it goes much beyond that. A real concern for the individual and to spend time with them. Providing an environment where you have care and respect for people. I think you have to earn the respect of the employee and because love comes from respect. It doesn't necessarily come from being uh, always a smiley person, always being uh, happy, giving people what they want. I think you have to be consistent in your approach. Uh, it's, I don't think it is easy. Um, it's the right way to do it. Uh, it depend, it's, the important thing is having that love. You can't put it on. You have to have a real commitment to, to loving the people that you work with, loving the the system that you've been given to manage. You can only give what you have. You need to carry love in your heart. You need to be a loving person if you want to lead with love and bring love to the workplace. Love is not something you can institutionalize in way of a document and make it a policy. Love is a manifestation of multiple facets of life and uh, it is an emotional connect. So, without emotively connecting with your people, how do you expect a person to be leading successfully? So, love is a requirement. Often you come across a situation where you have to really convey a decision which may be hard for an individual. And that's the time when you need to have, in my opinion, extra love for that person. At the same time, there is a need for firmness in the type of decision that is required to be taken. So, it's, it's a so that's the time when one has to be more cautious as to how you carry more love for that person because if it's going to impact his his job or if it's going to have impact his his credibility or his impact is any way in his financial uh, earnings then you will have uh, to be more cautious about it conscious about it and you have to take more love in your heart to convey that decision which may be also not manageable to you. i think uh, love would humanize a workplace mm -hmm. And uh, I think by de demonstrating our love, uh, you can again make workplaces joyful places. Uh, it's very important that you, you exist in harmony with all these 
and you can do that only when you're creating simultaneous value. But how does it convert at the workplace? Because you know it's very difficult to communicate this without confusing people. So the care which you bring in your paradigm when you are drafting your policies and your practices. You know, in England we say walk a, walk a mile in someone else's shoes. First of all, uh, developing the ability of the people to listen to each other, uh, different viewpoints per se, and then making sure that uh, they come with a holistic view of all these uh, pros and cons and then taking this way forward collectively, uh, that does not mean that we will get always the right answer. I think uh, we already said in the earlier part, you need to love your employees. People that you work with, it, it can even be distributors, your suppliers and being fair and taking care does not mean being weak. It means being strong and doing the right thing. But taking people along with you on those and the decision making journey that enables you to hit the trough and also scale the peak both together. And there is no, no such concept saying, okay, I'm your fair weather friend. When I'm at the peak, I'm with everybody. When I'm the trough, I'm with nobody. It doesn't work that way. I think uh, increasingly we recognize that the sustainability dimension of business, which is so critical, especially in volatile times, uh, more and along with it, the complexity of the business has gone up. So it's very, very important that we end up uh, creating a sustainable value chain and that sustainable value chain can only happen if you look at your organization from a perspective of providing a growth which takes care of all its constituents. As I tell everybody in our company that to be always expect the unexpected. So it becomes a culture, becomes a mindset that if something unexpected doesn't happen, something is missing. So volatility and unexpected and unpredictability is part of life and we should not only handle it but welcome it. It has to be ready to be adaptable. You have to come to terms with the situation, comes to terms with the, the reality and, and then steer the, the kind of direction you want to take uh, your company into. Uh, without compromising on the core values that you believe in. The change which is happening related to the artificial intelligence or equivalent of that, the scientific changes, are going to make life changes for the good. Where everybody is worried about the negatives or that what will happen to the humanity. It will be for the good of the humanity. That why we are making human beings work so much. He's not expected to work so much. You look at any animal, what does it work? It doesn't cultivate. It doesn't work on a mission. He'll only go and kill a prey. One must always put people at the center of everything we do. And one should never forget that. And it may require to make some unpopular decisions. It may require to make some decisions that may not look good from a profit and loss uh, point of view. But that's where the courage comes. In 2009, we had a sudden downturn of business. Many other companies would have made redundancies. But we got everybody in together um, and said, this is the situation, I explained the financial situation, and said that if everybody is willing to take a cut in pay and a change in their pension scheme, and if we could together make savings of £300,000, we would, could avoid redundancies, which I wanted to do because we have some very skilled people, long-serving members of the team, and I didn't want to lose anybody. And everybody said yes straight away um, and then five years later we had a fantastic year a, a, an extraordinary year very profitable and we were able to share that profit by giving everybody in the company a bonus of 25 percent of their salary at the end of the year and the most satisfying thing for me was that most of the people who had accepted the hardship for a year in 2009 were there to get the benefit five years later if you can get people to propose solutions, okay, if you get them to um, participate with you in addressing these issues, then you get employee buy-in. And when you get employee buy-in, you have a much greater chance of being successful. You've got to acknowledge that disruption is not happening by 
somewhere in Mars, we are creating it, industry is creating it. So accept it and learn to live with it and not, uh, not complain that oh there is disruption. Which way we want to go, disruptive way or a constructive way depends upon how you deal with that situation. Mm -hmm.